Ladies, controlling household odors is an all-day job, not just when you're cooking fish or airing out smoke-filled rooms. Why? Because offensive odors linger in your home for hours. You may not notice them because you've become accustomed to them, but folks coming in from outdoors are sure to smell them. So, play safe. Odor condition your home with Wizard Wick Deodorizer. It keeps any room in your home sweet-smelling 24 hours a day. Simply raise the wick, and away goes fear of stale tobacco smells, the embarrassing cooking odors of fish, onions, cabbage. Unpleasant smells in any room. Yes, you're safe with Wizard Wick Deodorizer because it works as a continuous odor conditioning unit. Get Wizard Wick Deodorizer, only 39 cents. Other Wick Deodorizers cost up to 69 cents, so you save 30 cents. Get Wizard Green Wick for pine scent, Wizard Pink Wick for delicate spring bouquet. makers of camels send free cigarettes to hospitalized servicemen and veterans. This week's gift camels go to Veterans Hospitals Boise, Idaho and Topeka, Kansas, United States Army Air Force Station Hospital, West Overfield, Massachusetts, and the United States Naval Hospital, Quantico, Virginia. The camel people have now sent more than 190 million gift camels to servicemen, servicewomen, and veterans. Here's Mary Hartline. Say, boys and girls, there's nothing so good as a cool, refreshing drink on these hot summer days. And whether you like orangeade, lemonade, soft drinks, milk, or even a cool drink of water, the best and easiest way to serve it and drink it is out of a Dixie cup. Mmm. I know, because I use them at home all the time. And you ask your mother, she knows. She knows that Dixie cups save her a lot of extra glasses to wash. She knows that Dixie cup means there's less of breaking glasses. And she knows, too, that drinking from a Dixie cup is more sanitary because everyone has his own individual cup. And it's so easy to have lots of Dixie cup handy when you have this attractive Dixie dispenser. So you ask Mother the next time that she goes shopping to get a Dixie dispenser and several refill boxes of Dixie cups. Dixie Cup, America's number one paper cup. <laughs>
All right, now you can actually hear me. I've been having some problems getting things working on the modern, unfortunately. Had to delete my save file to get this working, but that's fine. Uh, it should be working now, so that's all I need. Uh, sweet. All right. Hey, you know what, everyone? I am finally ready to go. That means I can cut out the first 16. This is why I don't want to uh, it's, I can cut out the first 17 minutes of the show. And, uh, and the final result will be the wiser and will probably be much better show for it. Welcome. You're ready to go in a second. Turn down the uh, speaker from the recording computer. I don't quite have to go through this elaborate setup to play on my PCS and live stream, but I kind of like to because once I do get it set up, um, I've got a nice 1920 by 1080 uh, television. Looks real nice, and it's great to play these games in a very immersive way. Rather than trying to watch it through XSplit or watch it through a side monitor or something like that, so I, I really enjoy it once I get it set up. But it's a, it does mean that I'm I'm actually running the display into a source that is physically a little far away to just control the main hub computer. But, uh, but we're all set up now. We should be good. So hello everyone, welcome to Mock Duck Plays Games Live on YouTube.com slash Mock Duck Plays Games. I recently put out my Tempest 4000 review, I've been working on it for, well I, I captured the footage last week, uh, and then I worked on editing and getting it out this week. Um, I didn't actually work two weeks on it, I, but I did probably both. Uh, and I thought it turned out pretty good. So. Uh, Hope you enjoy it. If you want to check that out, please do. Please do like and uh, leave a comment. Um, that liking really does matter because that's when people type in Atari PCS games into YouTube, how it determines which stuff pulls up there. So if, if you like these videos, um, the easiest way to make sure that the quality content goes up to the top is to use, but also use legitimately, because you legit want it to be uh, Use that like button. Do like these reviews and you, and you think maybe someone else looking for uh, things that might match those search terms in particular is valuable then I sure would appreciate a like. I'm a no-profit operation and I always will so um, I have no intention to ever monetize this channel. That means any videos you've actually or any ads you do get during your experience that has nothing to do with me. Uh, I've turned it all off to the extent that I can uh, and it's not like I'm a part But, no, uh, I have it all to do. And that's by deliberate choice. And I will never be collecting money either. Anyway, uh, I am taking part in the Atari I.O. Challenge. Uh, let me do one more thing. I'm, I, I'm seeing my mic. Let me uh, take care of that. Let's, uh, let's see how we do and capture this live from the Atari I.O. Challenge. Please, yes. Uh, I have had lots of problems in recent, I guess about a month or so now, um, with Centipede Recharge specifically on the Atari VCS, where I load up the game and my button mapping is to the point that sometimes I simply can't even get to the actual game itself because the load speed uh, never resolves. Just since they're unloading. Uh, and it's so it's not always been a whole lot of fun, but thankfully I uh well because I love this game. Uh and I've been a big Atari nerd uh, and set to fan for a long time. So uh, this game is great on the PlayStation 5 and it's great on the PlayStation 4. Great on the 
Uh, with the caveat that I personally have had some issues with the Epic Games, the way it loads in Epic Games. Uh, it wants to do some kind of, you know, I send you promotional email, which is fine. But it doesn't seem to want to save that preference. So every time I try to play a, a game, but Centipede Recharge, using the Epic Games feature, I have to go through a promotion. That makes it kind of not fun. But, other than that, it works great. <laughs> it seems like maybe a issue or something. I don't know. Is it better? How does that happen? But, hey, whatever. Clear out some of those more painful. I'm just trying to get a high score here. Looks like I'm coming through okay. I can't see your chat. If there's any chat going on, I can't see. Hello. at least one person who, who can see this video other than myself. Uh, but thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I, uh, so my best score is on my other VCS. Yes, I have two. Uh, I've boxed up them. Um, not permanent, but boxed up from regular daily driver use. My collector. My nice collector uh, that I made some videos on for the first year. Um, it just seems like if I'm gonna have a daily driver, you know, something I actually get a lot of use out of that I want to just sort of do one to take apart and play. Look at that one. My nice collector's edition as well the daily driver. So, but I had been, so I only have one. Um, but with that lovely Best Buy sale uh, around the holidays, I was able to pick up a Walmart all in. And that's awesome. So now I'm using the walnut for just, you know, actually just making the videos and playing on my PCS. Now I've got my nice collector's edition box stuff for now. Um, just to preserve it. Keep it in. Uh, but it was also useful to, to start fresh on another console. You know, I think you saw some of the videos I was able to make as a result. And I'm actually working on getting, I'm redoing Windows. Uh, I haven't done that yet because I wanted to make my Tempest video possible. Um, but I actually have a fresh version of Windows 10 on a fresh version of the portable hard drive. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to test a user that I think might be right. Uh, and that is, I have been having some problems getting games to run. Generally, they're just crashing the desktop for 
and someone had suggested that, you know, in my user guide, I told you to update the R6 drivers. In general, I think that's the best advice to make sure your drivers are okay. However, maybe it is the case that it is something in which those updated drivers that is causing these problems that other users can And so, the best way to test that is to just be able to and this time not update those drivers. And that's going to be doing here um, um, But I think that that'll be a, a useful thing to do just to, just to have an answer for my own experience if nothing else. Because if it does work, uh, that by not updating the R1606 G drivers, I can suddenly get, let's say, um, the game from the studio I work for, or, um... Heck, Rocket League. I'm going to play some Rocket League. And a few others like that, too. Um, but I really love to be able to scrap the scrap mechanic. <laughs> I work on the PCS. You know, whatever. A couple of games, right? But I just can't get those. I've never been able to play. And as a result, I honestly haven't been used to see mode nearly as much as the REOS because uh, the device is used to be able to do it. Um, but it's worth doing this, this extra work. So I reformatted the hard drive, gave it a full format, you know, all, all the build and whistle, and just keep it the same fresh. And this time I'm not going to update those drivers, we'll see what the result is. And uh, if it is true that, you know, those, the updated driver set maybe should not be installed onto your VCS, then uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in the video. Yes. It's not like I said, I'm earlier, I'm going to make it one I'll screw up anyone's VCS. So, um, I think I would probably just pull the video from that section out of the video. Maybe with even a little bit of depth of my page, which is I would be a second advice because it was the advice I was going to do as well. But um maybe I'll just grab it. Cases where I'm, gosh, if I'm wrong, because I think I can start playing these games. I don't want to play in the UCS. <laughs> but, uh, we'll see. I have to admit, a lot of times I will play Centipede Recharged and the other Recharged games on, I guess, what I would call simpler graphics mode. I turn off the screen shake. I turn off the effects. Um, it's a little easier. As a result, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe, that, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I realize I also have not yet even said what my highest score is on that. Uh, score so far on going to be recharged is, you know, not going to start some of my own barbecue sauce or anything, but uh, I got 97,000 is my highest score on the Atari VCS for Centipede Recharge. And my highest score, the second highest score, is about 87,000, and that's on the PlayStation I 
don't think I'm going to be able to hit that <laughs> again. I I don't know what it was that night. Uh, it was a late night game. I was playing using the classic joystick, and everything just synced. It was like my brain was one with the game controller, and I could just see like dodge and everything was just working. Everything was just working that one time, and I was just I saw my score cross my previous record and then shatter it and then keep going and then I would just like, oh my God. what am I doing at this time that I can do every time? And then of course I've not done it. But I have consistently uh, been able to get into the 60 pack. So in terms of the Atari IO competition, I'm pretty sure that would currently put me at number one. I know the consistent. <laughs> but still, still, kind of seems really real too. So that's, that's why I want to try to give it a real shot this time. Like, you know, I can do it. So I lost it. That 97,000 score is not gone because I boxed up my. I deliberately boxed up my. Collector's Edition. Or the of the so, all the scores on all the games on the Collector's Edition are just raw onto the console of the right? Well, except for, I guess, Jump Tech, but it's not. So, that means I can access. No matter what happens in the future, as long as I don't connect it to the internet, uh, I should always have that 97,000 score part there at number one. <laughs> Just kind of cool. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. But it doesn't mean I can prove it. I, I can actually prove it, but I would have to look up the console. This one, like I said, this is system having a problem with the hardware reset. So, I tend, in general, to be the reverse. I've been a long time Senna of Keith fan, arcade, 2600 version. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, as it carried through to all the various Atari flashback releases and things like that over the years, I've really enjoyed playing Senna of Keith a lot on modern consoles. I've actually said that it, it, it has been since the PlayStation game I always play first whenever I get a brand new game console. Just out of a bit of, of I don't know. Just out of good luck, I guess. Superstition, that's the right word. I always play some of the uh, whenever I get a brand new game console. And it was thus uh, with the VCS and the PlayStation 5. I like it. But I've never really gotten super into Milliki, um, partially because I'm bad at it, I guess. I just didn't get a good score. Uh, but also, um, uh, also it just hard. Uh, I agree with you that some of these recharge is actually a little more like Milliki recharge in some way. In terms of like its density of character. So there's some pretty, pretty cool stuff if you're a Millipede fan, I would think that you would see. Even though I've been a huge Centipede fan my whole life, I've never really been particularly good at it. So it's not like I've, I've ever, uh, in the arcades or anything, really been played with it. But I do enjoy the game. So Centipede Recharges was such a huge relief for me. This entire Recharge series has been. I mean, I absolutely love it. I think it's the single... With, uh, uh, 
unquestionably the coolest thing, other than I guess releasing the VCS itself, that Atari has done in 20 years. What else is that? What what else would be out there? It's gonna be people on the flat pad too. So I love these games, and I just say keep them coming. <laughs> keep them coming. I'll play them. <laughs> I want a Night Driver. I want a video pinball. I want a Yars Revenge. I want. <laughs> I don't really care about Crystal Castles, but other people want Crystal Castles, so sure, make a Crystal Castles too. That's fine. That's no I thought Breakout turned out good. I think the weakest of the bunch is probably Black Widow, um, but even then, I think it's excellent. So... And the only say, reason I say it about Black Widow is its difficulty is really puts it outside of a lot of kind of casual game reach. I can cap your the likely future skill score awful early in that game, and uh, it just must a little magic moment or something. It just isn't much gonna budge after about your first 45 minutes. At least in my experience. And so I, I kinda just ended up not really because there was it was so unlikely I was ever gonna be the school. It just sort of kinda moved on from the quickly. I also don't like their decision to not let you move through the I think it makes the game way too hard. Or whatever. Personal. Personal would be subjective, right? <laughs> And that one's really great on the PlayStation 5. Asteroids Recharge may be the most fun game I've played on the PlayStation 5. Although I really like Hot Wheels on the too. So, uh, if you're a Hot Wheels fan, don't don't skip that one. If you like Hot Wheels, play Hot Wheels Unleashed. Uh, won't work. Because unlike on, say, um, this kind of controller, right, it's finer, essentially. You know, even, even the fancier controllers have had, like, accelerometer control, but this has the ability to do epic locking, essentially. So that as you push down on gravel, you can feel the locks, and it forces back against you in that. And the way it ends up working with the setup in Asteroids Recharge is you can just just tap, just tap. When I'm on the dual sense, just, just tap it. Almost like a touchpad. And it'll just nudge your ship forward just slightly, perfectly, to dodge incoming asteroids and things like that. And it's a game changer. And, oh, it's so gosh darn good. It's so good. <laughs> and the responsiveness in general in the dual senses is, is amazing. Uh, so I've loved Asteroids Recharged on the PS5. The VCS version is great too. Um, and the classic controller is great too. I love playing Asteroids Recharged on the classic controller. But it, I, I think I might give the PS5 the nod for that one because it's more easily in 4K, um, which just makes the game look that much better. And because of that but it's still totally excellent on the ECS as well. All right, let me get to chat. Yeah, you know, 
like, here's the thing Saffir won. I, in general, you know, the Hot Wheels IP has oft been the focus of shovelware. Uh, perhaps low quality games that are just cashing in for a kid's market, something like that. But the thing about Hot Wheels Unleashed is it's totally not. As a matter of fact, it is made by a game development team that normally makes very accurate high sim game racing games. You know, your Gran Turismo is what that studio is generally known for. And so what they did is they took the absolute truthful physics of like what they've been able to develop with their racing game and apply it accurately to the Hot Wheels experience. While still retaining a very family-friendly, easy to pick up and play, single player and multiplayer Hot Wheels partner style game. Um, where you can also build and customize your own tracks, Mario. Uh, like, uh, like Super Mario Maker. It's amazing. And the graphics are so good that, like, they even include things like plastic uh, molding here that you would have seen. You can actually take a real life hot wheel and kind of go to his window mode. And you'll see, including two little molding injections, that little metal flap that kind of goes underneath it, uh, the, the kind of tires it has, you know, some are rubber, some are not. I mean, it's just it's the level of detail is they gave it basically ultimate respect, right? And when they were developing it, they were like, no, but this is this is like ultimate fan service. Because we can do a game like this. So let's do it. And I don't know who allowed who to make it, how it all came about, but they decided rather than making kind of a $20 future Walmart bin special, we're going to make the best racing game of 20 dollars But they did, and it is. It's absolutely amazing. Hot Wheels on It's so good. Uh, it has a few design things that you could argue. All of the cars have preset stats, as it were, and some are better than others. So that does mean there are winners and losers in the car department. Although I suppose that is true in real life Hot Wheels as well. But, uh, you know, still, uh, I mean, sometimes, like, that really awesome one you want to play, you can't because it's just you're just not You know, a few kind of minor games, well, you know, not always minor, but game developer style. But I like I, they could have solved it with a point for almost the same character creation. But then that might put it beyond the range of the ability of your average, say, seven year old to just sort of play. So I, I think they could improve. Plus it uses blind boxes. But you don't have to buy them. I sure do. <laughs> and I've got, almost got the platinum. I don't think I'm ever going to though, because I've got to get first place in five online races. And while I have two first place victories in online races, that is probably two out of 200. So uh, I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. <laughs> but it is, it is an incredible game. Uh, it really is worth, uh, worth calling out someday. I'd love to get it uh, working on the VCS. For the VCS though, the racing game I really want to see is. Horizon Chase Turbine. The game is really great. It's got all the sort of ease and pick up and play of this, of what suits this console well, and it looks good, it plays good, it's super tight, it's just awesome. Just awesome. Uh, I need to take a real quick uh, bio break and uh, refill my water. So I'll be back in one minute.
Uh, I guess before I promise to not bring up another game that isn't related to Recharged and that again, let me just say one more thing about my passion for Hot Wheels Unleashed. My living room right now where I turn this camera around is full of Hot Wheels track. And that's because I play it with my 10-year-old son. <laughs> and we have had so much fun with Hot Wheels over the years. So a game like that obviously is very soon. Okay, back on target. This is a not a terrible score. My best score yet this save file of 43850. Uh, I think on Atari IO, top score is about 48. So let's see if I can beat that. I should be able to. See what I'm saying though about turning off screen shake and effects? I think it leads to a slightly a slight increase in accuracy and readability of the screen, especially as it gets a little chaotic. It helps thread you through uh, some of those areas that you need to. So I tend to find when I'm going, like when I'm, uh, I've got the platform on, it's fine. A full uh, centipede and asteroid. I can't do breakout. Uh, there's a couple of forms in breakout I just haven't been able to get yet. And uh, I definitely want to get Black Widow because I'm just nowhere close to the um, It's the challenges that have me stuck on breakout and the trophy slash Uh, the other issue uh, specific to Breakout Recharge and earning trophies and achievements is that while it's certainly the most fun to do it, play this game co-op and earn those trophies and achievements in co-op play, technically for both Centipede and Asteroids, you can play it solo. You can just get through them all single player and let the one the other character die. You can't do that though on Breakout Recharge because of the, the way they've got it set up for that game. Each uh, paddle controls only half the screen, so you have to have active participation, um, really, of a second pair of hands to be able to succeed. I suppose theoretically, some kind of super whiz might be able to uh, make it work where they could uh, control both paddles at once, like as soon as it crosses the other side of the screen or something, or maybe use a keyboard or figure some way to do it out. Um, but in terms of what like, in general being able to do it, it kind of puts it beyond the reach of earning all the trophies or achievements unless you've got someone with you to play. And uh, it happened to coincide with me. my girlfriend breaking up, so, <laughs> so I no longer have force. Hey, thank you for a video. <laughs> I need another joystick for a video. I need to come over here and do my second player. Which you would still be doing. Tell whether where you are in the progression by what color the screen gets. Uh, you can't quite do it so much on all of them, but you can do it on both Centipede and Asteroids for sure. And Black Widow, I can pull it for a As a bit of a uh, However, you know, maximizing your score is probably the other thing, and that's what I'm mostly lacking right now. If you think of the screen of Centipede Recharge and games like Black Widow, uh, those two, I guess, in particular, as a potential for points, right? How much of the available points currently on screen are you collecting? How much are you letting go? And I have found that to really get the best high score in Centipede Recharge, you need to focus on that in the way that I haven't been unsuccessful for so far on this live. I'm kind of working for it, I'm trying, uh, but I'm not there yet. And that is, you don't let those fleas go if you can help them. Uh, you need to know when to hold them, when to hold them, when to let them go, 
loved one to uh, die, because you don't want to die, right? Uh, so you want to let him go. Each one of those is 200 points for that. Uh, and especially, especially the scorpion. Each one of those scorpions is 1,000 points. And uh, it's the highest point to score in as far as I'm aware. So don't, so you, you know, part of getting good at this game is learning to harvest the highest percentage of points that you can Asteroids is, and at least on Asteroids Recharge, I have oh, the impression that progression between levels, essentially, you know, waves of what's happening is consistent for the most part. You always have, like, sort of like, spaceship attack waves at certain points or things like that. So it seems like Asteroids is more based on destroying things rather than Say time to drop it the same way that some people drop it. And breakout is more specifically weapons because we have to break out through puzzle as well. So but these ones in particular you can kinda you can tell time progress specifically as it relates to your score. But you can't necessarily do it because I've gotten say to that right red section with 68,000 points, and I've gotten to that second little 20,000. And it all depends on how much I've been able to uh, harvest along the way. There is an element of luck to both Centipede Recharge and Asteroids Recharge, I think, in particular. Um, let's so break out because you gotta pretty much get the power ups you get will help with her, but unlike some of the others, you don't really have to take the power ups. So ultimately, you can just play really well and with less of an issue. But there are, like in Asteroids and Centipede here, you can get, let's say, a lucky string of bonuses, and it really difference in your ability to progress through the various levels I find. But when it comes down to it though, I think that only provides a benefit to a certain almost like cloud of scores. I don't, you know, it's only going to help a good player occasionally get a better score maybe than say determine whether or not you're good or bad at something because you, you still got to be good at the game. Uh, it's just I think you're going to have a little bit of a wider range of top scores personally based in, in part on the random nature of the way power starts to work. So you're going to have a little bit. I don't think it's a bad thing, but, you know, it, it does kind of have implications when you're looking at things like the world class I agree. Uh, I, someone on in chat, uh, Sat, uh, Spargan, is saying that a game like Jetpack Joust really is being discovered on the VCS in a way and that it just isn't on Steam. And I, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but I totally agree that it had already been on Steam and I sure never saw it. And if I had, I don't know that I would have checked it out. But giving it a feature on the VCS like this, um, once they forced me to play it, but made me see it in a way um, that helped me discover it, and discover it in a big way because I came from it. And uh, that's the kind of thing, if I were an indie dev with an amazing game, 
trying to break through that wall of how do people even see it? And then if, if I get them to see it, how do I make them care? You know? Uh, having a space like the VCS, I think, is, is one of the keys uh, for maybe the future success. And, but this also means that as a VCS game, you get to carry it in a way. You get the advantage of that in some ways. Because that means there is this sea of unknown games out there that could be amazing if only you saw them. Now maybe you can. So because whoever's doing the curation at Atari, you know, while people are going to have their own subjective analysis of how good the games on the system are, I think in general the bar of quality is very, very high. Uh, very high. Even the games I don't like, I rarely could say that they are bad. And I think that that matters a lot. And and it helps build trust for people because when I see something like a slip up soccer, I'm like, oh yeah, soccer game, you know, I'll be like, well, hey, all the other games that I was like, I don't know, ended up loving, like a Jetpack Jeff, so you never know, I'm like a Pixel Cup, but I end up liking that game too, although I really got to play it because it, it was certainly more fun to Anyway, if I were an indie dev like, trying to release a game, I would think strongly about getting on the VCS. If, if unless it's some big technical hurdle uh, to do, it seems like it couldn't hurt. Because <laughs> I, I, I know some indie devs. I am in the game category. I'm not a developer. I help them with their Twitter. <laughs> That's about the most I can help in terms of indie game development and giving some pointers on what not to do on Twitter. But, uh, you know. But I, a lot of those people are like indie games. And so you see, you know, I see firsthand just how difficult it is to break through that digital wall of, you know, there's a thousand games at least every day. a game that looks indie, even if it's the most fun game in the world, how do you get people to see it over the 13,000 pages of games that already exist right, in that same space? And, uh, you know, Steam themselves has come up for a lot of decades trying to solve that problem. So, you know, very successful. But certainly right now, terrible place to go. No way to find it. If I want to find a game, you think I'm going to Steam? You know? I'll go to Steam after I get it. But, um... No, it's just not a place to go. Because there's a game, that openness actually breeds the same kind of anonymity that a closed platform, you know, What's the difference between a, a platform where anyone can access but nobody ever actually finds or buys it and, and having a platform where you never get access to it? I don't know. So these gems, these failures that I keep reading about, let's say, on the forum, so there's like the PlayStation Vita. Remember, I, I was I was on Planet Vita from day one. And I ain't leaving that planet till the day I die. But anyway, um, I spent that the entire tenure of that device's life just... People were like, Vita, Vita, stupid. Oh, nobody wants to play with you. Nobody wants to play Meanwhile, I'm playing and buying tons of games for literally a decade, <laughs> and they were amazing games, and they were great, and it was the, 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 it didn't get eclipsed, and, and I will, you know, I'm a Sony fanboy, but all of this was a wonderful place, and it really offered the experience that us Vita owners had been having. Seven years earlier. 
uh, both with a wonderful way to play indie games and uh, a nice portable device with a kick-ass looking screen that always kind of still uh, playing games like TX Cat and uh, a bunch of other things. But in so, so in some ways, you know, my experience with the Vita um, and seeing that, you know, in fact, there's plenty of <laughs> and they continue to do so. And the reason they were doing so is because they weren't selling 100,000 copies. They weren't getting in the front page of Twitch. And they weren't, you know, getting in Steam future promotions. But they were selling a reliable 500 to 1,000 copies. There were some indie developers out there. That's enough when combined with maybe the sales they get from your Hitchios. Um, Whatever to be able to get together, maybe, maybe they weren't actually getting it. So it was not because uh, they were actually finding in terms of more signals, they were getting more signals. To yes, a much smaller. But what does that matter? If, <laughs> I don't care if I could sell to a billion players if I'm not going to, you know? Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, if I can reliably put out a game a year on the Vita and sell five I don't know. I'm based on, I, I know two, I, I was able to ask two game developers who had released games on the Vita, what if, if they were willing to share the actual amount of copies of in content. Um, but, you know, it, it's not too far off from kind of like the, the general fall process. I would argue, and I think that today's release of the video of Tempest 4000 really proves that that kind of game has a level of excitement for the VCS community that is probably not going to be um, on a place like Steam or Epic or something like that. You know, and it's not that those communities are bad or anything like that. It's just that where's the concentration of a bunch of people who are going to do something like this Tempest 4000? Uh, and or, or I, I see, frankly, I see you, Tony Barnes, in the chat. Uh, something like your combat chassis. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to play combat chassis. Uh, and I'm sure BPM Boy is going to be great too. But but like for me personally, I am super excited. For combat. I've wanted a, a game that appears to be kind of like that. Game. <laughs> As, you know, as someone who's clearly an expert in your game. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, it seems like just something I've been playing to play for this time. So I'm very excited to, to see it uh, eventually come. But I, I'm going to guess that... Sure, maybe maybe, keep, maybe you've already got a world of gold. I, I don't um, But I'm going to say it's you're far less likely to find a bunch of people who maybe grew up playing your combat in the world who are like, let's see a version 10.0 of that. You know, something like that. Not that you would be all that much of combat. But, you know. You could maybe find a spiritual succession on some of the So then, of course, you know, it, it really is is dependent on Atari, I think, that so make sure that you have access to them. They are able to do the communication to know that, hey, combat chassis is about. And I think that's, I don't know what they do in the game before. I think to some extent, just kind of giving your score to which isn't. I think we'd be expecting to see something to be the same as a rollout of motion. 
but you know, once people know it's out, and then it's in the hands of, say, community to then spread the word about it. I think that that is probably the best. Ah! Oh, no! swap over to that and see see what kind of difference we get i currently have three i currently have three classic controllers in the house and i know what you're saying why don't you have four in case i can never play four player warlords uh but the answer is i don't have a fourth one yet <laughs> no uh the answer is i got one from the collector's edition uh that's this one which is not broken but there's something up with it uh and then i got I purchased a second one because I did want two for Pong because I like Pong and I like Demon's Diamonds and a few other games like that that I really wanted two-player paddle style support for. So I went and just bought a second um, classic and then I got my third one here with the Walnut All-In Bundle. Uh, the one from this collector's edition, though, you can hear it. Hear that? Hear that sound? Feels like plastic on plastic or something. There's something up with this controller, and it's not quite as um great as the others. Now I got this on December twentieth of twenty twenty, and so I think there's some chance I may have actually received one of the first batch of classic controllers that were produced out of that factory. And as such, it's possible that there is some mechanical adjustments that were made between iterations of production or something like that, right? That could lead to a difference. And there's, I've read a little bit of speculation about whether or not later editions of the classic controller um, might have additional metal, maybe a little piece of aluminum or something, reinforcement on the bottom to prevent a shearing issue that some players have experienced. This sounds like it is the start of a shearing issue, but it sounded like this since approximately maybe March of 2021, and it hasn't sheared yet. It basically plays fine, but it doesn't sound fine, and it doesn't feel quite the same as uh, the very specifically well-made uh, newer versions of the classic controller. And so what that means is that I am going to take this one apart live on camera is the end result of that. Um, because um, I don't know that... I don't know that there's some big secret that I'm going to learn or anything out there, but as long as I have what almost has to be one of the earliest production runs of the classic controller um and i can compare and contrast it to a new controller if i need to um, plus there's ample video of new controllers um i can take this apart see if maybe i can figure out what's going on with it and fix it and then also perhaps answer this this question that i've seen in a couple of youtube comment sections uh, over the past year or so, I have a feeling that this is pr the potentiometer is probably essentially anchored toward the top to some kind of ribbon cable, and the ribbon cable probably goes in through there, and there's some kind of basic metal thing that probably ends somewhere around here, and you've got it reinforced probably with uh, almost like a fidget spinner style uh, bearing, bearing, yes, bearing 
that is anchored in place by however they anchor it in place. Because that's, that's really about the only way you could do it, right? It is, at some point, this has to be floating. So I think that's how they do it, is probably that. And the potentiometer is essentially a ribbon cable of some kind in order to read it. Um, I don't quite know. We'll find out. <laughs> but it sounds to me like maybe I've got a bound ribbon cable is my theory. That's been my working theory since I started hearing it, is it sounds like I bet there's a little bit of folded over ribbon cable, a ribbon cable that's jammed up against or wedged into a thing. And I bet if I open it up, I might be able to, to get it all working really well. Ah, game is drowning me out. Okay. I can fix that. Yeah. You took care of that. Thank you. Let's do it again, shall we? Uh, same issue I've been having with the... With Centipede Recharge has just not been walk, working for me lately. And it... That's the version of it where it gets stuck. Uh, that means I need to do something here. Let me flip over my monitor while I'm at it. Quick uh, cut the video. Swap over and delete my save file without exposing some information I'd rather Thankfully, now that the word has spread about how to fix this, you know, all you really have to do is just delete the save and it'll work. It's great. Still sucks. Hopefully it gets fixed in the near future. I assume it will. Not the kind of thing you're just going to let sit. All right. While I'm at it, let me turn down the volume. I do like playing all the recharge games on the Classic. There's not a one that I don't like playing on the Classic. I do tend to play Centipede Recharge more often with the Modern. I think it's just a little bit... A little bit better, kind of. But although I do like the ability to nudge nicely on a good calibrated uh, Classic. You just kind of, you know, tap the stick and move, like, maybe one mushroom bunch of cards. So I guess it's for Centipede I've mostly stuck at the bottom, but, but I do like playing this On Asteroids, I always play with that. Because I love the, uh, the spin control. And of course, break out. Of and Black Widow, I have to admit, in general, I play a lot of Black Widow. But to the extent that I do, I usually play that one on the modern uh, because of the kind of twin stick shooter nature of it. Uh, you can twin stick okay using the classic, but I found that it, it was just a little hard to keep situational accuracy with using one stick in Kari Warrior style. You know,
So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I found the challenges in Centipede Recharge to be fairly easy. Uh, I got the Platinum uh, for Centipede Recharge in one afternoon on the PlayStation 5. I think it took me probably a total of four, maybe, game hours. Like so not too bad, actually. Pretty, pretty easy. Uh, Asteroids Recharge I got done in one afternoon. I think it was maybe a few more hours than the other one. Cool day. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, then the others I don't have yet. And probably not yet. But I found uh, Centipede Recharge to be pretty fun. It was like the good balance of you can attain the PlayStation trophy, but you are going to have to work for it. Um, but you can. You don't. It's not dependent on like winning online leaderboards or, you know, getting a score of a million or anything like that, right? <clears throat> it's essentially, you do have to be able to do that uh, in both solo and co-op. But again, with Son of Peter Recharge, you can, you can do co-op solo. Sometimes, if you really want to... <clears throat> well, I've, I've never been able to make it work, but I suppose, theoretically, when your left controller died, you can jump to the right controller quick and somehow keep surviving. Uh, that never actually happened. <laughs> I'm aware of it. though. See what I'm doing? You, I'm doing... I can't say that I create this deliberately, but when I notice that I have it, I do take advantage of what I'm doing here, which is you actually put a mushroom almost fence style on your game board to help prevent yourself from getting knocked into by Aaron or something like that. Um, and it's a good strategy to develop if you know what you're doing. Yeah. I will have to take a picture of this. And that'll be my high score for the Atari IO submission. I think that puts me at number one for today, unless someone else has seen a score above 48,000. Uh, version of Centipede Recharge there. Uh, you know, I is I think I saw Yanni in chat. Is that is are you actually there, Yanni? If so, it's okay if you're not. Um, but if if you are, uh, I should probably take another look at Gun Tech and do an updated video about it because you know uh, as has been done previously. You know, you've made enough changes about the game that it, it really kind of deserves its uh, a new mention, kind of a new, fresh look. Uh, but it isn't clear to me when GunTech 2.0, like with all of the leaderboards and everything, is really in a position to to get that kind of treatment. So, um, if if you feel like it. Uh, just drop me a quick Discord uh, message or something when, when you're kind of ready, when you feel it's kind of in a ready state to, to grab some video and maybe take a fresh look.
Uh, so I didn't. I, I did one of the things I initially did in my review, but I ended up leaving it on the cutting room floor. Uh, was a discussion of the various uh, modes in Tempest 4000, and the reason I ultimately cut it out is one, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but two, it doesn't really make a huge difference in Fire. some ways. Pure mode gives you your standard gosh, three, five lives, whatever the, I think it's five, right? And um, <clears throat> then if you switch to survival, you get all your lives up front, but you still get some one-ups through the process. And you get, I think, nine lives on survival mode, and it just goes for as long as you go. It's sort of intended to be a that. But pure mode really seems to work the same way. And you know what's really the difference between five lives and nine lives when you're when some of your best games involve I mean, you get a bunch of extra lives. So I never actually found it to be particularly relevant. Uh, so I even though I had the right uh, video kind of going through the various game modes and what they all meant, and when I actually came to the end of the was like Really? So I'm gonna just cut this whole thing out and shake off a little bit of damage while I'm dying. The main thing that I, I think I did not mention, although my video is yeah. really yeah. 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 is that if you yeah. want to get a good score in just 4,000, you really want to, well, you, have to, you want to collect all those followers. That's the main thing. But you also don't want to jump in. When you are in the air, you do not score points for the things you destroy, unless they are in the midst, or you are in the midst of the super zap. So if you're jumping in the air and you hit the super zap, the stuff that gets super zap doesn't need to be in the But otherwise, if you're just like, if I was just hopping up and in the air and here, uh, just for fun seats, and blasting these ships, I'm not actually scoring. So, uh, don't yeah. jump unless you really need to. Yeah. And in yeah. my yeah. opinion, yeah. Yeah. I largely save, jump, and treat it somewhat similar to the, um, Super Zapper itself. And that I try to be pretty careful about not jumping unless I, um, but you need to, uh, especially as the game progresses. Original 
is quite fine instead of less significant pain, but you still can't ram it going through the machine. But, um, it's less of a killer. <laughs> and, uh, just, uh, 4,000 hands, yes. So, I mean, like, even though I just gave you good advice about jumping, I'm still doing it. A kind of a threshold where you just have to be able to open the floodgate and just uh, pop it and keep yourself alive. But even then, you know, it's not a, it's not a, you get out of jail like it's still cool. Turn down the music of this.
this is where I left off um, on so far in Tempest 4000. Um, you know, a lot of people don't really think about that part of the game because it does make you jump right into a particularly difficult thing in that, but ever since Tempest 4000, the game has actually been semi-designed with this in mind. That you would actually start, you know, where you left off last time, to some extent, and progress through the 100 plus levels of the game. I think a lot of us still play old school style, starting at level 1 and see how far we are. But, uh, you can't uh, do that, and it works pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I did put a flashing lights rolling on my video uh, for YouTube today because, uh, you know, oh my gosh, is this game. If you can you if you're the kind of person to get like migraines yeah, yeah, watching yeah, 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 or any yeah, yeah, game probably, but this game in particular is gonna yeah, be just like epilepsy on wheels for some people. It's uh, a little dangerous in some ways. But at the same time, you know, as long as people are But especially for my video, I just felt like, ooh, I really couldn't not put that warning in the video right up front. Because I was afraid, you know, what if, what if someone did, I'm not talking migraines here, right? you know, what if someone had to take off of the action? Those things coming at you, those are so deadly. Just have to dodge in there. Oh. Ah, I missed it. Originally in my video, in my review, I wanted to include video of TXK for the PlayStation Vita, and the Vita has never had a good um, capture, video capture solution, really. Uh, there are, like, a few people, there's a while where you can buy things that kind of work, but even then, uh, not really. Um, unfortunately, I, I talked about how much of a Vita I actually played the Vita. Uh, the battery. Uh, so just over the past year in particular, I can no longer actually get my Vita to power up. Unlike, which I assume is because... Well, I can power it up from now. Like right now, I've got it working. Uh, where I've got it connected through USB to my computer. And I can go through the setup screen. Can't really even. Nope, I can't even. Oh, yeah, can I? Yeah, here we go. So, like, I can get TXK going on the Vita. Uh, if I were to unplug this, it would just go straight to dead. And within about 15, 20 minutes of leaving it unplugged, this battery not just dies down but dies to the point that the Vita doesn't have enough juice to initially start up 
without a two to four hour initial slow charge from like a cable like this. Like to get to this point, I left this thing charging overnight. Uh, I was hoping to grab some video of TXK on it because I, I really love this game. Um, but it's just not really functioning for me anymore as a device. Unfortunately, the battery's just, you know, worn out. And because it's got an internal non-removable battery, I think that means that long term, if I want to play that device, I need to open up the back and either replace the battery somehow or bypass the battery so that I can run it off of USB or something like that uh, and not remove the factor of whatever is trying to cause it to need the battery on initial load. I just plumb wore the thing out. So I couldn't grab video of TXK uh, for the video review, unfortunately. I'm uh, going to play a uh, little Tempest with a modern here. And then I'll wrap up the stream after a, probably another game or two of this. I did turn down the volume, so I, you know, I guess I wasn't saying anything all that important anyway. But, uh, but there we are. Um, I do appreciate people watching though. Uh, I, one of the reasons I wanted to do switch to the modern other than just play it that way is I wanted to change the soundtrack. And that's done using and instead of pure mode this time I will do survival begin with nine months. and I'll start from the start I don't think pleasure gets you anything other than uh, beauty, you know, gives you a bomb like a you know, that you can ram into things and destroy anything you can. Uh, and a few of the others seem to have kind of destructive effects as well. A few of the flavor effects you can But pleasure specifically comes up a lot. As far as I can tell, it's just a point bonus. Same with treasure. Treasure also, as far as I am aware, seems to just be a point bonus. The neat thing about the Vita version was you controlled those mid-scene areas by moving your controller gyroscope style. And while that sounds very gimmickly and gimmicky and, you know, painful memories of, you know, terrible Wii motion controls and stuff might be popping in your head, the trick is it actually So on the Vita, which you know, there's a lot of junky motion controls, but this wasn't one of them. This was actually pretty sweet, and it worked really well. Uh, and uh, it actually kind of added to the overall experience um, of playing TXK. That was really fun. Cool. So it's, it's a little, it was a little weird to see it come back here for Tempest 4000. I, I kind of thought that was maybe just going to be a beta. Or I guess it's part of the Tempest, uh, the Tempest template. Because you can kind of just very gently use the thumbstick to, to keep yourself pretty stable in a way that you can't with the classic character. You do actually want to use your super zapper every level, uh, even if you don't technically have to. And the reason for that... Uh, uh, 
Uh, the reason for that is uh, because you get two times points while you're there. So it was a, a point reason to make sure that you Oh, Heaven, that's the other one. I think Heaven is just a points bonus, although I haven't actually been able to look at the points and tell kind of what I'm getting or anything on it yet. I haven't quite figured out what Heaven does. Uh, there is a bit of strategy as well uh, that I can... I'm, I guess I haven't really been practicing, but I should start doing I'm getting to more difficult levels. Uh, and that is, while you can't really control much about how things spawn, you can control where that very first follow up is. And the reason for that is that the first really enemy of significance is where it's going to come from. You'll notice on these new levels fresh, just watch where that first power up comes from uh, after I sort of start uh, shooting enemies. And so. If you want, if you feel like it needs to be in a corner, for example, or you need it to not be in a corner, and need it to, like, be in, you know, uh, the middle of the screen or what have you, so you've got maximum width to respond while you're waiting for it, um, you can, you can do that. You can actually plan it. Yes, 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 yes. I remember on the Vita, and I was going to try to test my memory because it has been a um, but I was of the impression on the Vita that if I uh, got enough parts, I mean dead center of those flying parts, um, while doing it like between levels, like if I would go yes, 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 and I would like speed up, and then you would get a bonus warp. And so the Alpha Vita, if I remember correctly, that would be the best way to get warp code, essentially, to uh, be accurate with your uh, fly bombs and collect them all. But now, I can't remember if that's true or not. Just <laughs> I don't know. It's been too long. I haven't played TX in the Vita since I was in the game, which is one of the things that I And I actually, you know, there was a time, I guess it was in 2016, where I went to Walmart and they had one of those new Vita Slims in the box. And he, I didn't have the money. I already had it. And I wanted to buy one anyway. And I really wish I had. If I, I wish I could go back in time and tap myself on the shoulder on that one. Just do it. If you don't. Because you want it because you're really afraid of this thing. Well, you can't. Look at it. And now, of course, they're actually somewhat of a collector's. They ended up, uh, they ended up retaining their balance. Just for a break, even in 2024. Uh, you could argue, minus, of course, the lack of new games, that the Vita is still a fairly comparable experience to the Switch in 2022. That OLED screen still looks great compared to the old school, the, the non new OLED Switch. And um, the kind of games, the way those games look, isn't really that different either. And so it kind of, it, you know, still feels fairly modern and popular when you play a Vita that's not working. 
but um, it's really when you get on um, that you're just like, oh right, this device was made in 2011, you know? <laughs> the world has changed quite a bit since 2011, has it not? And then, of course, you know, Sony's own support for so you can no longer purchase this from the store. I don't even know if you can download from the store. Long ago, I, I put a in an archive of all the games I wanted to keep on this thing. I just went through the store and downloaded everything I wanted to. Um, but I think that's pretty much not existing anymore, too. So people are just hacking and using for hack devices, which is okay. But... I feel there's a whole lot of just original Vita experiences out there that will just be lost because too many of those devices are just hacked. So anyone in the future is going to be able to experience what the Vita was like when they're playing the uh, version that's got kind of retro versions. Which, to be fair, is a sweet thing too. So I've always been on the lookout. Next time I see a boxed Vita, either in some rural Walmart somewhere, maybe still, or a big lot, maybe, or maybe even at a flea market if they only have 600 bucks for it. Probably will pick up a second, just so I can actually get it. Well, I have a flea. Oh, the other game is really amazing on the Vita. It's a funny chance you have to not know this and happen to have access to a Vita. Williams Pinball Hall. That Pinball Arcade. That's the far site in It's one of the best for playing those pinball classic but real pinball machines on the Vita is perfect. So good. Yeah. Sure says is one of the strongly recommended Vita as well. It's a really quirky cool game. Well, hey, that's been a pretty good long, uh, good long live stream here. Uh, yeah, jeez, what, almost two hours? Right? 
Well, uh, that's going to do it then with the show. I really do appreciate everyone joining me here today. Uh, hope you're having fun. Uh, check out the channel if you want to. I don't know that I'm really going to be doing a lot of live streaming um, on this channel. I also do have a Twitch channel for that. And in general, I don't do a lot of live streaming right now. But uh, I just thought this would be fun to do for the Atari IO Challenge and to just kind of talk a little bit more casually about uh, Tripus 4000 here. So I was lovely to see some actual people from Discord in that in chat. It was really cool to see everyone. So uh, really appreciate it. Nice to see y'all. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.